The Journey of Hobbler As we now know, Ogress is always unbearably busy when she's awake for that short time before Christmas. But now and then, just for a break, she likes to go outside to make a snowman. Oh, look, it's just like Ragyuk. <laughs> and then it's back into the cave to continue her housework and wake her boys to send them off on their tasks. Ogress always giggles to herself when she's rousing her yuletide lads, lying there in a bunch fast asleep on the cave floor. <laughs> she laughs. First of all, she wakes up Hobbler with a kick in his rear. Like his father and most of his brothers, he is an all-time snorer. A long and skinny fellow, but bold like his dad. He has long, tangled sideburns gathering in a moustache right under his nose. Wake up! Wake up! You're not sleeping Christmas away, are you, son? Are you? <laughs> Hobbler unenthusiastically opens one sleepy eye and looks at his mother. He decides that it's probably best for him not to argue but to get up and dress. Summoning what energy he has, he finally stands up, stretches his stiff body and scratches his back. Ogress is always playing tricks on Hobbler, hiding his clothes. Today, he can't find his red jacket. Oh, where's my jacket? Ogress has used it to dress the snowman in front of the cave. Down, Mum. <laughs> Finally, Hobbler is ready for his journey down the mountain to the village. Ogress hands him a sack of magic potatoes, saying, Remember, these magic potatoes are not for Yuletide lads to eat on the way, but to put in the shoes of the little children as thanks. For the food that we take from the villagers. <laughs> for the children who've been good all year, the potatoes will turn into something nice for them to find when they wake up in the morning. <laughs> but for those young brats who have been annoying and naughty, the potato doesn't change at all. So they wake up to find only a potato in their shoe. <laughs> Each child will receive the gift they deserve. <laughs> the bullies might remember to behave better next year. Oh, yeah, no, Mum. You have told me before. Oh. Hobbler yawns, still dreaming of drinking from the many, many buckets of sheep milk he hopes to find. Sadly for Hobbler, he hardly ever enjoys so much as a single sip of his tasty sheep milk. His body is so stiff and slow, he finds it almost impossible to dodge the horns of angry rams when he's in their sheds searching for milk. It's 13 days before Christmas, and Hobbler is the first of the Yuletide lads to make the journey from the cave, down the mountain, to the village below. The night is crisp and clear. Moon looks down to light Hobbler's way through the snow. He limps as fast as he can to try and keep warm, but he's so stiff and clumsy, he often falls head over heels in the snow. But on he ploughs, talking to himself. Oh, how much I'm looking forward to drinking all that lovely sheep milk that I'll find in the farms of the humans. Suddenly, in front of him, appears a beautiful farm with sheep. Just by looking, Hobbler can already taste the milk in his mouth. Oh, it's no dream this time. No, not at all. Hobbler is sure that he will find buckets and buckets of milk, which will immediately give him relief from his aching joints. Now I taste all those delicacies, he gleefully mumbles to himself. <coughs> Unfortunately for Hobbler, the ram, which lives with the sheep in the shed, does not take kindly to intruders and tends to attack them if they overstay their welcome. <coughs> Hobbler can only move slowly because of his sore joints oh, and his easy oh, game for the ram. No, down boy, down, Sadly, down boy. his no, visit to the sheep down. shed is short. <coughs> As he is propelled high into the air by the ram, his body black and blue, every year Moon watches empty-handed Hobbler being tossed out of the sheep shed. Will Hobbler ever learn? Despite the failure, on he limps to the village to find food for the Christmas feast 
and to leave a magic potato in the children's shoes as a thank you. As soon as Hobbler has delivered all his magic potatoes and taken the food, he makes off across the fields. He's in a good mood after his visit to the humans. Ah, oh, how nice it is to know that all the sweet children will wake up in the morning to find a gift in their shoe, which makes them and me happy, he says softly to himself. As always, he's the first to arrive at the Yuletide Lad's secret meeting place and makes himself comfy. Moon looks down with a smile at Hobbler, making a campfire to keep himself warm while he waits for his brothers. With a rumbling tummy but a happy heart, he whispers to the smiling Moon, Although I have no milk to offer my brothers, I am sure this will be an extraordinarily happy Christmas. As always. Rolling his eyes, smiling to himself as he looks forward to seeing his brothers again. <laughs>